Hey friends, I want you to come spend the morning in the garden with me. I have got a bunch of little odds and end jobs that I need to get done. Little projects that I have been putting off or just haven't had time to do actually. So this morning we are going to get some things done. I thought it would be fun for you to come along for the ride and the journey and uh, just spend some time with me in the garden. Here we are, middle of June, North Carolina Zone 7B, and uh, we have been blessed with a very cool, wet spring so far. In fact, just yesterday, last night, this morning, it, we got over an inch of rain, so the ground is nice and moist and damp. Plants are loving it, have not had to use irrigation a ton this year, so that has been nice. The heat has not really hit. The weather today is kind of ins and outs. We're starting to get some blue sky. So I'm going to take advantage of this kind of <laughs> fun spring weather here in North Carolina and get some jobs done. So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to start out here in the backyard. We're going to spend most of our time here in the backyard today. I have got my faithful Johnny and of course my little furry companion with me today. Johnny is loaded down with all of the supplies that we need for our work today. Now, what we're going to do, just give you a bit of an overview. We are going to plant brand new gardenias here in the backyard. We are going to hang some birdhouses on the berm along the fence. We are going to take these Supertunia Mini Vista hang white hanging baskets and put them in a pot. I have a little trick for you I want to show you. And then down here on the ground, I have got um, a beautiful set of wind chimes that I would like to hang up in the woods so that we can hear them here in the backyard. And then also we are going to hang up some more of the hose link solar lights here on the patio. They left me some of these um, solar lights that are just really fun and beautiful. They actually had them up for the photo shoot, but they used, um, they're very considerate when they come to do a photo shoot. They don't permanently install the lights. They just use like double-sided sticky tape to put the lights up on the wall, but I love them so much. Today, we're gonna actually install them uh, for real and permanently in on the wall in the patio. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get uh, the quote, hardest job done, and we're gonna plant the gardenias. Now, um, I'm gonna show you the gardenias exactly in here in just a second, but I wanna show you the space first. Here we have the um, flower bed, of course, that is right um, along the separates for the yard from the patio, right? We've been here many times. We were here earlier, um, late winter, early spring, when we planted, replanted our, our red, <laughs> I can't even talk, our hedge of incredible hydrangeas. And look how beautiful they are. They are just loving life. And this is after, you know, a good solid 12 hours of rain and they are just hanging in there and doing great. They're called Incredibles because look at the head, the bloom on this plant. Is it not just absolutely massive and gorgeous? Incredibles are the improved version of an Annabelle. They are in full, full sun and sun up to sun down. We have talked about, because we are in North Carolina and we have such a very long growing season, I'm going to do in a little experiment with my smooth hydrangeas, um, my pinnacle hydrangeas, the ones that bloom on new growth. I am going to do an experiment and come through and kind of prune uh, the hydrangeas throughout the growing season. And when I say prune, I just simply mean I'm going to cut some flowers and put them in a vase um, and use them. And they should have a new flush of flowers come in the next, um, in, by late summer, early fall. So that will be really fun. Um, so it will be time to start uh, cutting some gorgeous flowers here that we can make some bouquets. So the Incredibles are doing great. And then the double play doozy spireas, they are here in front. The doozies have been here for um, the whole time that the flower bed has been here and they are doing great. I did not prune them. I should have uh, late winter, but they have just, they're kind of on the end of their first flush of blooms doing really nice. I may come in here and shape them up at another time just to try to uh, clean them up a little bit. But I tell you all of that because I have a lovely space right here between 
the doozies and the Incredibles. The perfect space for five of the brand new gardenias from Proven Winners. Pillow Talk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and um, kind of window pane the gardenias between the spireas. So I've got five of them and they should just be perfect. So let me show you the Pillow Talk gardenias. Gardenias, if you have been around uh, me for uh, <laughs> any length of time, you will probably know that gardenias are my absolute favorite flower. I don't think you can get any more like iconic, southern iconic shrub flower than a gardenia. Maybe a camellia, but I love camellias, but camellias generally do not have a fragrance with them. Gardenias do, and um, I absolutely love them. So here we have five one gallons that our friends at Proven Winners and Spring Meadow Nursery, who is the home to the Color Choice Shrubs, sent us five of these Pillow Talks. Pillow Talk is new this year. Gardenias are beautiful evergreen shrubs. Like I said, they are for the southern climates. They are hardy in zones 7 to 10. You need at least six hours four to six hours of sun for them they have the most gorgeous beautiful pure white flowers that um these are a nice size i tend to be a bit of a gardenia snob i like a double bloom instead of a single bloom the bigger the better and these are deliciously fragrant you will see that they are covered in buds all over the place love them now the reason that we are going to do Pillow Talk instead of Steady As She Goes because they also have Steady As She Goes. Steady As She Goes can be um, a little bit big for this space. I'm going to use the Steady As She Goes up near the chicken coop in those gardens, but Pillow Talk will fit perfectly in this space between those Incredibles and the Doozies because they are going to be two and a half to three and a half feet tall by three to four feet wide. So they're going to fit in there perfectly. These will be really my only evergreen shrubs in that space and I have gardenias also right just right around the corner the Chuck Hayes and so those gardenias will all tie in together so what we're going to do is I have my power planter auger here with I went ahead and just left the five inch heavy duty tip on there because these are one gallons and so I'll just work my hole a little bit uh, to make it big enough for these containers and then of course our biotone starter fertilizer we are going to use that as well so I am going to get these sweet babies placed and plop them in the ground and then I'll see you back here in just a second The gardenias are in the ground and they look fabulous. Now, yes, they're tiny, but that's the fun. You get to watch them grow and develop. And hey, they are loaded with flowers and buds, so I get to smell their delicious fragrance. So I am a very happy girl. Basically, what kind of happened is they did get placed in front of the Incredibles, um, which I'm totally fine with because as everybody grows and develops, it's just going to be kind of a, a nice, beautiful mass of shrubs within this whole area. So you can see as we go down um, the line, they just kind of start here and then just curve around all the way over there to the side. Incredibles are doing great, covered in bumblebees. Spireas are looking fantastic. And can we just stop for a moment and appreciate this lavender? There is no question as to why this lavender is called phenomenal because it is absolutely phenomenal lavender. If you know me, followed me, you know that I was about to give up on lavender 
our friend Kata from Walters Gardens was like, hey, try this one. I think you'll like it. There are three clumps in there and dear heavens, they are beautiful. Clearly in full bloom, now is a great time to come in here and cut flowers so that we can have beautiful, delicious fragrance in the house. I will not like completely shear them back because I want the pollinators to be nice and happy. Um, but when you do cut your lavender for your bouquets, you're gonna come and you're gonna trim right above the real woody part so you can just kind of gather it up in a ponytail and then just cut it right there. Um, of course, lavender is fantastic dried. It is does great in mixed bouquets, but it is just gorgeous and I love it. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move up here to the patio and we're gonna put some solar lights up. So let's mosey on up here and let me show you what we are going to do. So I've got these three trellises. They are from Gardener's Supply Company and I have them with the clematis growing on them and they are just beautiful. Aren't they so much fun? Beautiful kind of a white center with a nice purple edge. All of those down the, um, on each of those trellises, they are all the same. And then of course my David Austin roses, I have three different ones that are in front of those, all in the shades of pinks. So what we're gonna do is you can see these sweet little solar lights right here. I have four, I'm only gonna use three today. Um, but what is fantastic and so easy about these guys is of course your solar panel is on top. They need six to eight hours to charge. Then of course your light is down here, an LED light. And all we have to do is get a nail or a screw, put it in the wall and then just simply hook it right there. Really easy. Um, these make a beautiful light when they come down and just kind of really kind of shine and spotlight here on the trellises. So what I will do is get my ladder and I'm going to center it right here um, between in the middle of the trellis and then hang them up. It's as easy as that. If you're interested in these solar lights, you can head over um, to Hoselink go to our video description so just click on when you're looking at the video and it'll you'll start to see the description and it says more click on more and then it'll drop down and it'll say hose link click on that link use the code creekside when you check out you'll get ten dollars off of any purchase so click on that it'll take you to hose links website look at your solar lights they are great i've never been a fan of solar lights because they um, are dim they don't last long they just in my opinion have always looked like really cheap and just like i didn't like them these are really really beautiful they come on our sun sets around like 8 30 ish right now so they come on around that time and when i get up at six o'clock in the morning they're still going bright so love these there's a whole different kind of slew of them um, but these are the fun ones that we're going to do today so i'm going to get the ladder my hammer and uh, get these babies hung up Dear heavens, my friends, that was about the easiest light install I have ever done. That is the beautiful thing about solar lights, right? You don't have any wires, you don't have any plugs. You simply need a nail or a screw and just get those babies put into place and voila, we are going to have a gorgeous accent lighting here on the wall. Um, so those three little lights up there, nice and uh, beautiful, discreet. Cannot wait to show you. 
um, tonight when they turn on, I'll take some pictures so I can show you exactly um, how everything looks right here. If you're wondering about the clematis, I had forgotten the name of it. <laughs> uh, I, tried, I tried my best, but um, looked it up. This is clematis perennial, and I get all of my clematises from Brushwood Nursery. I did look it up right now. They're currently sold out of this one. It's just because of the season, right? Um, they have just gone through probably some of their major shipping, and this one is currently out of stock. If you love perennial, just wait till the fall or the winter and then go in and order it. I'm sure they will have it nice, fully stocked and ready to go, but beautiful. I mean, this is the first year, right? I mean, I just planted them this spring. Uh, the one in the middle is a little bit smaller, but that's all right. They'll all catch up. Remember, uh, we have that beautiful saying in the uh, gardening world, right? The first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. We're not even into our first year yet. And if this is sleeping, I can't wait until they leap. So they are doing good. Lights are up. We're checking some things off the list. Now, while we're in the mode of hanging things, we're going to pop on down here um, just right across it from me and we're going to hang up the wind chime along the woods here at the creek so that way when we're sitting back here not only do we have the fountain going but when the wind blows um, I have my glass wind chimes hanging on the porch but we'll have a totally different sound with these wind chimes down along the creek so grab everything the ladder and we're going to head down here and get those hung up can you tell I love like the multi-sensory aspect of gardening right not only do you get to see beautiful flowers but the lighting the fragrance of the flowers hearing things in the garden where birds or the water or the wind chimes so much fun all right let's go get those hung up here we are down in the woods close to the creek bank i'm gonna flip the camera around give you a little idea perspective of where we are um, again i am right along the creek bank but you can see how close we are to the back patio, right? Because we were literally just right there on the other side of Johnny, and that's where the patio is, and that is where we just hung the lights. We were in this space late winter, cleaning up the wood line. Everything is doing well. Uh, this year, we are managing weeds, briars, um, honeysuckle, all of that kind of stuff. We came in here and limbed up the trees. I've got to come in and probably, uh, <laughs> maintain this a little bit more we've started that and just keep this maintained that way we can develop the gardens in here so gives you a whole idea of course right backyard there's the dahlia patch the garden shed um, the backyard flower beds that forest pansy that's where the shade garden is um, and then we come on around and then here we are back at the front porch front porch is right here the row of daylilies um, the berm is out there and then the nursery is just right there and our sweet little sleepy little creek that we have is right here below me so that gives you an idea Brenna does love the creek especially this time of year um, she'll just run up and down the creek not that she's necessarily like swimming because it's shallow but you'll just hear her running back and forth and back and forth she absolutely loves it we are going to hang the wind chime on this poplar tree right here you can see i've got my ladder um really simple i've got my hammer and then i have got a wrought iron um, hook that we are going to actually nail onto the um, tree here we i got these gosh a couple of years ago i think i ordered them from amazon um, but they are nice and sturdy have done really well and they take either two screws or two nails um, i had hammer and nails so that's what i'm going with so we're going to hang this up on the tree semi high probably because these wind chimes are long and i want uh, to have good wind coverage and so that they can i can hear them so we're just going to get these hung up
the wind chimes are hung. Cannot wait to hear them uh, tinkling and billowing on their own when the breeze comes along, which should be pretty soon. But anyway, uh, to hear, let you hear um, how they sound. Uh, I ordered these online. Isn't that lovely? It's a nice kind of a deeper tone than any of the other wind chimes that I have. So I like kind of that deep tone. Obviously these are a lot longer. Um, and so even though I put the hook up high, they're not that terribly far off the ground. I did order these online. Uh, my mama was the one that turned me on to this brand. It is, let me show it to you here. It is Music of the Spheres. It is, they're handcrafted in Austin, Texas. I ordered them online, right? So you can just go to their website and you can order them. You can listen to them. Uh, and so you can have like, this is the um, Quartal, this is the Alto Chime, but you can listen to um, the different ones. So that way you can kind of get an idea of what you want. But uh, yeah, so love that. They are up, they will do well. You can leave these out year round. So um, I know my mom has got a lot of different ones that she has left up, I mean, yeah, year round. So they're, they're weatherproof. You don't have to worry about freezing or heat or anything like that. And so, um, yeah, so this will be fun. Now, <laughs> one more project where we're hanging things. We are gonna go ahead and move up to the berm. I've got those three bird houses that I wanna hang up. We've got one for bluebirds and then two for our smaller birds. So um, we're gonna get everything together, get my supplies. I need to get um, some nails or screws or something to hang these babies up with, and um, I'll meet you up there at the berm. Here we are at the berm, and we are gonna hang up some bird houses because I do adore birds, right? I love songbirds, all the birds um, here in the nursery. We are actually a certified wildlife habitat uh, from two different organizations, a bird sanctuary, so we do enjoy having our birds here and providing um, not only food and water, but housing. And then of course, all of the natural things that they need here with the trees, the perennials, the shrubs, all the pollinators, all the fun things for our birds. I'm gonna help further that along just a smidge. And we're gonna install three of the heartwood birdhouses. If you followed us, you know that I am a huge fan of heartwood um, birdhouses. They are actually in Star, Mississippi. They are a family company. You can order directly from them. Um, it is, um, I'll have the link in the video description. So you can go there and shop their bird houses, ladybug houses, uh, butterfly houses, all sorts of great things. They are beautiful and they are functional. I love them, the birds love them. We're gonna do two different kinds here. Um, and we're gonna put two on one side of the berm and one on the other. So, on the nursery side of the berm, we're gonna in install this bluebird house. This is the bluebird manor, um, and bluebirds need to have a larger hole um, to go into. So if you can see the size of that hole versus this little hole, this is smaller. Bluebirds love to have, I think it's an inch and a half diameter hole. Um, and I decided to go more of the natural look instead of the bright colored painted ones, which I love. I just thought for the berm, I wanted these to kind of blend in. What I also love about these is that they're amazing quality. They're beautiful, um, but they're also very practical. So with the bluebird, it has a little latch right here and you can easily open it up and you can uh, clean it out. So that makes it really nice. You just close it back up and then just turn this little guy right here. So these are beautiful. So we are going to install the bluebird house on the nursery side. And the, then this style is called I think, the starter home. And so we are going to put these guys on the house side. Let me double check. Yes, starter home. And these have um, a nice little hook right here that we can hang them easily from. And then this is how you clean it out in the back. This copper plate will slide um, down. You can loosen that screw just a little bit. It'll slide and you can clean it out. So these are going to go on the house side. The bluebird, we're going to put just straight here in the center of the berm, which that is this post right here. So we are going to get it hung. And then we're going to flip around on the other side and get the starter homes 
and we're going to space them out as far as we can so we'll have one up at the top and then we'll have one way down here at the end of the berm because uh, generally birds do not like to be crowded these may even be just a little bit too close together where i'm putting them but um, i figure i want to give them options right give the birds some options that way they can find their uh, perfect home and get established and have lots of sweet little babies and just live a great life here at Greekside. So we got the bluebird house hung up, easy peasy, even doing it uh, by myself with trying to get all the hands going on. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes our sweet little bluebirds to find this. But yeah, screwed in, there you go, not screwed in, nailed in. We're going to pop over here and then get uh, the two starter homes hung up as well. All the bird houses are hung up. So we have the Bluebird Manor right there. Fantastic. And then we're gonna come, instead of just showing you both of the starter homes, we'll just mosey on down here and I'll show you the one we have on the end that is the closest. But isn't everything looking great in the berm? Yes, fantastic. Everybody's growing, very happy. The coleus over here that we just planted not terribly long ago. Look how nice and thick that is coming up. And then there you go. There is one of those cute little starter homes. They are evenly spaced as far as each of the starter homes is the second post from the outside. And then the um, Bluebird Manor is all the way dead center. So super cute love that hopefully we'll have some new residences very soon all right now we got one more little project that we are going to do today um, i need to switch out some annual pots that are by our sidewalk i'm going to show you a great little trick great little hack on how to get an instant gorgeous pot that's going to last you all season long our last little project of the day is to plant up these two containers that i have on each side of the sidewalk typically i've not done these here before but this past fall, if you remember, we did some um, tater tot arborvitaes. I had them in quartz, and so I was growing them out to see how they did. They've done well. I've got them right here. We're going to repot them because I'm going to use them up in the chicken coop garden uh, later on in a couple of weeks. So they did well. We had violas around them. Violas are done, right? Here in June, North Carolina, they are done. I thought it would be fun to do a little pop of something right there. You know, let's throw in a little extra color. So I've got a great hack that I'm going to share with you using some hanging baskets. It makes a very quick, very instant, gorgeous display in a container, and it's super easy to do. So with just a little bit of know-how, you can have the beautiful containers like that, um, and they'll last all season long. So let me show, show you how I do it. Here I have... A container. This is an inexpensive, lightweight um, container that I've had for several years. Got it from, I don't know, remember where I got it from. It was, you know, we've had it forever, right? Um, this is probably um, diameter is about uh, maybe 14 inches across and let's say 18, I would, it's not even 24 inches tall. So, kind of gives you an idea of the size of this container. So, my trick with all my containers, right, is start with some compost in the bottom. Um, because we start with the compost in the bottom. This is a trick that I learned um, from reading an article in, I believe it was Fine Gardening Magazine, talking about how to make your containers last as long as possible. So we start with high quality compost in the bottom third of the container. 
you can do this in your hanging baskets, your hay racks, all sorts of containers, right? And then we're going to top it off with our Proven Winners potting soil. Now, I've gone ahead and filled this up pretty much all of the way, right? Because the trick is, is then to take your hanging basket and we're going to take the hanging basket apart. Now, this will work with any hanging basket because you're putting it into a container. Here we have the Supertunia Mini Vista White. It is one of my absolute favorite flowers to do because it is just, it's that beautiful classic white, of course, and then the habit on this is just so nice. It is nice and tight. Yes, it trails and it is beautiful, but it's not going to be a crazy vigorous um, spreader, not nearly as um, vigorous as say like this the uh, snow drift, right? Or this the bubble gum. So make a claw with your hand, settle it down, and then put your fingertips on the soil of the basket. Flip it upside down, right? So we're holding it, and then wiggle the basket off of your hanging basket. So you have your container, right? Your hanging basket free. So what we're going to do, come back over here and we're going to make a perfect hole where this hanging basket is going to go. Right here in the center. If you have any extra soil that needs to come out, just put it back in the pot right for now. And then we're going to use this again because the idea is that we're going to make a form for the pot, the hanging basket, the root ball, to go in here. That way we don't have to worry about fighting. Okay, so see, push this down all around the edges just like this. Take that extra soil that was in that I used in the hanging basket and press it around. Now this soil is um, a little damp. It was an older bag and it evidently got rained on. So it is a little moist, which actually is going to help me because it's going to hold my shape better than if it were dry. So, go around, do this, and then pull it out, and then I've got the perfect hole right here that my hanging basket, the pot, is going to go into. Before I do that, I'm going to add some of the Proven Winners Continuous Release Fertilizer because petunias are very heavy feeders. So, you have got to feed them. Food equals flowers. So it can go in the hole and it can also go around the edge. It doesn't matter as far as if you put it in the hole or on the top of the soil. It'll get to it either way. So there we go. Now, if you have a plastic saucer with your, um, on the bottom of your root ball, take that off. This does not have one because it was built into the hanging basket. So if you have that plastic liner, just take that off. Then we're going to come right here and plop it in the hole and boom. Just like that, we have a perfect fit. So I'm not having to come in here and try to get soil in here and messing up the hanging basket. It is easy as that. My soil was wet. My plant is nice and damp. So what I'll do is just shoot it with just a little bit of water to make sure it's settled in, but I'm not going to have to saturate this hanging basket because from all the rain we got yesterday. I do have um, some saucers on little feet right here because this is obviously is not on irrigation, right? So the only way it gets water is if I water it so it helps to have a nice little reservoir. So because if it gets dry, when you sometimes you water your plants, the water just will shoot right through. You want it to have a nice time to soak and sit there and really get your soil saturated. Um, so there you go. We got one down and we got one more to go.
morning's projects are complete and it feels great to have those small but uh <laughs> a lot of those little tasks were coming up so it feels really good to have them done give you an idea here of the perspective of the uh, containers here with the super Tunia mini vista whites nice little simple classic statement right there um easy peasy right nice and simple so use that hack go get your um <laughs> hanging baskets, get them in a pot. It will make an absolute beautiful, easy statement for you to uh, have in your garden. But yeah, it has been a great day here. Now we're off to go shoe shopping for the kids. Their feet are growing, my goodness. Uh, they're growing like weeds around here. So we gotta do a little shoe shopping today. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. We hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye friends.